always a mess. Come on, get up there and stand and sing. Put your hands up there. Levi. 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 chapter 1. We're going to preach in a hurry this morning. And so, uh, if you would, you just jump in and hang on. We're going to read a few verses, and I'm going to do a lot of telling you what uh, we're, going to, we're going to take a, really a survey of the whole chapter of Joshua. I mean, the whole book of Joshua. Uh, in about, I'd say it won't take me but about an hour and 45 minutes. Amen. Of course, hour and 45 minutes from now, I'll be here by myself. And so I'm thinking I'm trying to condense it in 30, 35 minutes, amen. So in Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Look at verse 12. The Bible said in verse 12, And to the, uh, to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Now we're going to stop reading right there, and uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, what the title of the message uh, this morning is, which side are you on? Which side are you on? You've heard me preach on this subject plenty of times, as far as from uh, the text in Joshua. Uh, as you well know, there is uh, 12 tribes of Israel. And then uh, you, uh, they, they, they split. In other words, what happened was at this particular time, 
Uh, they were in, uh, on this side of Canaan. They had not went into the promised land. And in uh, Numbers chapter 32, uh, the tribe of uh, the uh, Reubenites and Gad, half tribe of Manasseh, they struck a deal with Moses. They told him, they actually, well, I don't know if you call it a deal or not, but anyway, uh, they told him and said, we want to stay on this side of Canaan. They, we like the land of Jesus. The land uh, uh, is nice pastures. It's a good place for our cattle. And we want to uh, raise our people, uh, our families here. And so uh, uh, Moses agreed with them, but he told them in Numbers chapter 32 that they would have to go over and fight for uh, the promised land with their brethren. And uh, he told them, he said, now if you don't, be sure your sin will find you out. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and, and later on when it comes, uh, uh, when, when they talked about um, uh, going there, uh, this that we need to understand now, uh, God wanted everybody to go into the land of Canaan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, to us, now, the land of Canaan is a type of the blessings of oh, yeah. the Lord. Amen. It's a type of being in the will of God, Amen. okay? Yeah. What I mean by the will of God is be lined up with Amen. the word of God, okay? It's God's way. God, God, listen, you know where God wants all of his, uh, all of Clearview this morning? Can anybody tell me where God wants everybody that, that goes to Clearview? Where did he want them this morning at 10 o'clock? Amen. At Clearview. <laughs> now, everybody's not here. Some's homesick, some's. Uh, at different uh, places, uh, Vance and Jamie, that uh, their home, her home church, having home home. Can we realize people do that every once in a while? We understand that people go on vacation, you know, uh, uh, you know, one, ten, twenty times a year, and, and so they miss. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. God expects for all of His people at Clearview to be at Clearview right now. That's where He expects them to be. And I'm not going to back up from that. I'm going to always preach that. He expects you to be here tonight at 6 o'clock. He expects you to be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I'm not going to back down from that. He expects you to be here this morning at 9 o'clock for Sunday school. I'm not going to back down from that. I know what God's Word says. The Bible says not to forsake the assembly of yourselves again. Amen. Amen. We need each other. Some people just think, oh, I got the Lord. That's all I need. That's not all complete Bible. You need, I know for you to get to heaven, all you need is the Lord. But while you're here on this earth, you need more than the Lord. Right. Amen. You need, we need each other. Amen. I'm not Amen. preaching on that. Canaan land is a type of blessing. It's a type of the Christian living in total obedience to the Lord. So where were all 12 tribes supposed to be? Amen. On the other side of Canaan. Two and a half decided they didn't want to go. You know what? And I, you, know what I've, you know what I've learned and after pastoring for 30 some years? You, you only lead those that will follow. Right. You cannot make them follow. You know, I, I thought it was kind of like this when I first started pastoring. I thought it was like having children. You know, you just beat them until they get in line. That don't work. That don't work with grown people. That don't. Amen. You just love on them. Amen. You preach to them the word of God. And if they follow, they follow. If they don't, they don't. Amen. Now, we have two different groups of people here. Now, we're going to get into message later on. And they, they, uh, there are two different groups of people. But the group, the two and a half, that didn't want to do what God wanted them to do, they, they still want to be associated with the nine and a half that were doing what God asked them to do. They didn't want to, they didn't want people to look at them as not being the same as the other. But we got two different groups. Sometimes we got more than two. Uh, we could go into, you know, dissect and, uh, but, but it's, hey, listen. There's two groups of people on this earth. And that's those that are saved and those that are lost. We have two different groups of Christians. Those that are living in the will of God and those that are not living in the will of God. Amen. Amen. It's just that simple. It's no gray area with God. None whatsoever. And so we got two different groups of people. We see that. Verses, verse 1, when Joshua's all the people to go over. And in verse 12, he says, Now Reuben, Gad, have tribe and answer. Here's your part that the Lord, uh, uh, that Moses made a deal with you and gave you. Now, you know this. You know, you said, well, why in the world would Moses make a deal with him anyway? Because Moses, listen, Moses was trying to lead a people 
that had already made their mind up what they was going to do. Did you know after pastoring 30 some years, I can already, I, 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 listen, I have determined in my mind, in my heart, and I know I preach on being faithful. I preach about coming to church and and, and uh, some are real faithful and others are, are, are guilty of what I said a while ago. But what I'm saying is, listen, uh, people have already made their mind up. Yeah. Did you know that church people say people ain't no different than the world? Amen. I won't get in your crawl this morning. I'm going to make you think about something. I, I, I'm supposed to stir up your pure mind, the Bible says. You, I, I'm just, what I'm trying to do this morning is I'm, you say, well, preacher, you, you you might be a little agitating. I might be a little agitating today. Right. Might like being on the sand with some short shorts on, amen, when that sand gets where it ain't supposed to be. <laughs> it's a little irritating, amen. Now, that's a bad illustration to use at church, ain't it? <laughs> Let's take that one away. Can I get Brother Ray's eraser and raise that one? Look at here. I, I'm just simply saying this morning that everybody is not like everybody. But everybody wants to be included in the crowd that is going to heaven. Everybody wants to be included in, with the crowd going to heaven, even though they don't want to look like the crowd that's going to heaven. They don't want to act like the crowd that's going to heaven. They don't want to talk like the crowd that's going to heaven. They don't want to listen to the music that the crowd that's going to heaven should be listening to. Wonder, I heard this before. I'm just going to say what I heard another preacher say. Okay, can I say that? How many, y'all wouldn't mind, <clears throat> wonder what kind of music would be playing on the radio if we're not doing crank the car and just hit the on button? Would it be God honoring? Something to think about. Listen, it says here uh, in my notes, and I, I don't know how I got these notes. I'm just preaching what these notes say, okay? So don't hold me, and listen, don't get mad at me, amen. Hey, Moses was trying to lead a people that already made their mind up. Did you know that people come to church like that? And I said, there ain't no difference between the world and, and the Christian. The only difference is the blood of Christ. That's right, man. Because most people in church are just like the people in the world. They're going to do what they want to do. Yep. And ain't nothing you can do to change them. That's right. God can change them. Yep. Now, God, if they listen to the Lord, God can allow things to come in your life, trying to steer you in a different way. Amen. Sometimes people just go right around them yep. and keep going the way they're going. We are talking about uh, the difference between confession and repentance this morning. Confession is with the mouth. Yep. It's just a bunch of words. <laughs> repentance is when you turn from something. Right. That's what makes the difference with God. Amen. And so uh, some people today, listen, they already made their minds up on how much they're going to come yep. to yep. church. They've already made their minds up on how much they're going to give. They've already made their minds up on how much they're going to be involved. Yeah. I'm telling you, right. people are more involved in things in the world than they are in the church. It's amazing. Yeah. I want to tell you something. These people, <laughs> uh, Reuben, Gad, the half tribe of uh, uh, Manasseh, they they saw the thing. Uh, uh, they saw the land. Uh, they saw this what this world had to offer, and it was more important to them what the world had to offer them than what God had for them over here. Right. God said, "I got a place over here for you that's flowing with milk and honey." They said, "Well, we like the green grass over here." Yeah. That's what people do. They make their mind up. They, they didn't. They didn't even consider. Right. I did what said. They went over and saw it and still didn't stay. Yeah. There's people today that go to church that have lived in the land of blessing and know how it feels to live for God and be close to God, but yet they would rather be over here across the fence on this side struggling, knowing they need to be over there. There's so many people like that today. These people in Num uh, here in Numbers, they had never seen the land of Canaan. They had never seen the land of Canaan. But yet they made their mind up, we don't want to see it. Or don't want to live there. And then after they got over and looked at it and saw it, they still didn't want to go. That's amazing, ain't it? Yeah. That is amazing. People today do the same thing. They, they've never, listen, they've never tried to read their Bible every day. Right. They've never tried to pray every day. Amen. I would tell you what, when you start doing that, you'll find out that ain't enough and you do, need to do that multiple times That's a day. Right. 
So, you know, listen, I'm glad the only verse I don't, uh, I listen, Brother Mark's uh, post or Brother Vance's post or somebody else post on Facebook when you post a Bible verse, that's not the only verse I'll read today. Might be the first one. Brother Mark posts them pretty early. My phone in there, ding. <laughs> anywhere from, anywhere from, I was going to say from 4.30 to 5, somewhere in that area. But I get up around 5.30. Sometimes I get up after the ding. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you, listen, there's so many people today that they, 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 they have made a commitment. Listen, we got good people in this church. We really do. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure we got some lazy people around here somewhere. But most people around here ain't lazy. They work. They provide for their children. Amen. They, 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 they make a living. Yep. But I'm going to tell you something right now. In, in making your living and in providing for your children, don't just let it be monetary. Amen. It needs to be spiritual. Right. And that spiritual, I'm telling you, in the long run, is going to have, listen, more, listen, it, this, I'm just telling you, it's going to be more important in the long run than all this other stuff. Amen. I see so many kids today, listen, kid, listen, these kids today, when they leave home, don't even know how to crank a lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. I told you the other week, Miss Debbie got all over me. Well, she didn't get all over me. She got on pretty good, though. I said, I mowed yards for a bunch of lazy people. She, she <laughs> threw in the door, and she said, Preacher, I have, you know I ain't lazy. <laughs> She's not able to move the yard. That's why I'm mowing that yard over there. But what I meant was, these, these people has got grown kids. Yeah. I mean, twice big as is Vernon. Vernon's been on a lawnmower. He's 13 years old. He's been on a lawnmower for three three years or more. Oh, and with a zero turn. Right. Oh, he's so dangerous. He might, eh. Yeah, I can tell my dad I had to push lawnmower. Yeah. Remember them? Oh, yeah. Some of y'all remember them real to real? I mean, the real cutters. Yeah. yeah, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, thank God they come along with one of them motor, amen. <laughs> Terry, did your daddy make you mow the yard when you were a teenager? They laid Terry's mama's mower. I forgot Miss <laughs> Evelyn did everything around there. <laughs> Spoiled your kids, Miss Evelyn. <laughs> they, did it, they didn't do it right on purpose, Evelyn. So they wouldn't have to do it. That's what it was. If I didn't do it right on purpose, I'm going to tell you what, my daddy's foot would be following me. Anyway. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. Right? These kids nowadays, is, I mean, they know how to work their thumbs. Yeah. They'll play a video game, but they wouldn't know how to crank a lawnmower, wouldn't know how to crank a weed eater. Listen, we got some, you, you, ain't, no, ain't nothing no more stubborn than a stinking weed eater. <laughs> Brother Tyler, I had three of them this week. I got three of the same kind, and I had one running fine. I was put it in, put it down over there. Went to get it again. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Got thrown back in the truck. Here I go back to Grover. I called Brother Sidney. I was doing Brother Sidney's yard. I said, Brother Sidney, I texted him. He didn't answer the phone then. I texted him, I said, brother, I had to come back, we'd eat some other time. He said, don't worry about it. I said, this aggravating satanic machine Amen. won't work. Went back to the house and tried to figure out, uh, take parts off this and put it on this one, and then I got them all free broke. Good, amen. <laughs> had to take them over there to Evelyn's brother-in-law. Hopefully, hopefully he'll get them right, amen. I said, Jerry didn't die, I mean, he can't fix my stuff no more. I probably have to read these in the grave. I worried him to death. I worried him so much. But anyway, you know, when you think about, when you think about, kids need, they, they need the spirituality. They need Bible preaching. Amen. You know, everybody, I, it seems like everybody I run into on the street and invite them to church, the first thing they them, what you got for kids? Oh, we got a bunch of toys over there. We got a big playground. I mean, my gracious, kids get out every day. Yeah. Every day. You know what they need? They need the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Talk to some of these people that work at the schools. They need some authority in their life. Amen. Goodness gracious. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. Uh, I'm just saying, listen, we need to be committed. If you're going to be committed to your kids, you need to be committed to church. That's right. And to the church services. That's right. And to the things that this church does. Amen. 
Amen. Now we go on. Now, I, I'm just saying, listen. The Bible says in John 10, 10, I am come that you might have life, that you might have life more abundantly. Now, Jesus is not saying that uh, so that you will make more than anybody else and you can buy more than anybody else and have more than anybody else. That's not what he's talking about. And he, But he does want you to be blessed. Amen. He wants you to have things. Amen. Amen. And wants you to enjoy them things, but he don't want them things to come between you and the Lord. Right. Then we have we have two we have two different I gotta hurt. We got two different groups of people. We got two different messages preaches preached here. In verse two, he he tells all the people, he tells all the people, all the people, let's go across Jordan. Yeah. Then he turns to Reuben, Gad, and Now, you leave your children, you leave your wives and your children here, you go over there and fight, and then you come back. Why is there two different? You know, there's some churches like that where uh, the preacher preaches out the side of his mouth, some ground. Why is it that everybody thinks that the deacons, the Sunday school teachers, the preacher's family, and, 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 and the ushers, and those that have a position in the church, they're the ones supposed to be faithful, but the rest of them, we can do what we want to do. I would tell you what, all the Word of God is for all the people of God. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. It is. But we have this thing like, you know, it's just like, you know, when you study over there, you'll find this. They said, now, we're going to do as our servant, the Lord, told us. That's what they said. But it wasn't capital L, Lord. It was Lord case, Lord. They were talking about they was going to do what Moses said they could do. Let me tell you what. Don't do what I say you can do. You better tell, listen, you better you better make sure that you do what the Lord Amen. tells you to do. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something right now. You know, when you think about these, these people here, it, 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 wonder why in the world that they were important. Well, it was important because they was part of the children of Israel. And, 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 and two, they was hoping, look, when they get over there, they're going to see what they're going to get. They want to stay. You know, we hope that for our children sometimes, Amen. family members, loved ones, friends. You know, we tell them about Jesus and tell them what the Lord's done for them. Right. And we're hoping that the Holy Ghost will take that and put them under conviction. And sometimes he does. But yeah, they go right back right. to where they were at. That's bothersome. It is. Now, I'm going to tell you what, there's two different groups of people. There's two different messages preached here. We find here in, in chapter 4 that God tells Joshua to get one man out of every tribe a stone for uh, 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 get a stone for a memorial, and, and when you when you read that over there, he's doing that. He's going to build a memorial so that they'll have uh, something. It, it, it's it's a you ever you ever go to places uh, where battlefields and stuff. You ever been over there, the King's Mountain battlefield? They got a little theater over there. You can go over and watch a little short movie, and and everybody needs to do that. And the little memorials that they got in different places. You need to stop and read that. I, I, that, I mean, people gave their lives so we can have what we got now. Amen. And, and that's what Josh was trying to teach his people. We're setting this for more. We, we're putting this there uh, 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 as a blessing or a praise to the Lord for what he's done for it. He parted the waters of Jordan so we could cross over Amen. and we could enter into a new land. Amen. This God did this. Yeah. We need to have those kind of memorials in our life. Amen. Now, we find that they took those stones and they put them together and they made that memorial to remind their children what God had done. And listen, he's, <coughs> he said over there, when your children uh, in time to come shall ask you what means these stones, you can tell them. Yeah. You know, you, you, you keep telling your kids about the Lord Jesus, about the Lord Jesus. He, uh, the Lord Jesus, he, he lived a perfect life and and they, then he was crucified. He was hung on a cross, and he died for our sins. And then he uh, he was buried. And in three days, he got up out of the grave, and he's coming again. And you say, uh, well, you just keep telling your kids that, keep telling your kids that. One day they start asking questions. Yeah. And you just answer the question. You don't leave them alone in nothing. You just answer the question. Amen. And one day they'll they'll say, Well, I'm not a sinner. Well, the Bible says all the sin comes short of the glory of God, and that all need to be saved. Uh, and you just keep you just keep asking questions. I'm telling you, if you lead your children in the Word of God, they will ask questions. That's right. But that other crowd wasn't going to be nowhere close to that. They was going to be five miles away from it. They would never see it. Yeah. 
the children. And they went out, and the children would never see it. One reason because it's on the other side of Jordan. I'm just telling you, look, they wouldn't they never going to see them anymore. They wouldn't they have them kind of questions that everybody else had. If you don't bring your child to church, they don't. They, you need, that's why you need to bring in kids to Sunday school. Amen. Bring them kids to Sunday school. Let them right. let them teachers tell them about Jesus, what Jesus did. And then one day they're going to start asking quick about Jesus. Jesus right. did it. Why did Jesus do this? Why, why did Jesus crucify? Why did he go to the cross? Right. Why did he die for sin? Why? You're a sinner. I, I'm a sinner. I, and this guy, hey, I'm telling you. That's how kids learn. Right, sure. You wouldn't dare keep them out of public school right. or private school, wherever school they go to. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Their children will not be able to see this memorial. Mm. That's why, that, listen, that's why it was bad on the two and a half tribes that stayed over there. They wouldn't be able to see that memorial. And they, they, they wouldn't be able to teach your kids the same thing that, you know, they'd have to say we used to. We used to. We used to. We need to make sure that our children see Jesus in our lives. Amen. Amen. But make sure that forgiveness is taught in the home. That's right. Now, I know your home ain't like mine, but every once in a while, me and my wife have this uh, agreement. Amen. Have a loud conversation. You know, I can't hear well. And I don't think she can either. You know what we have to do every once in a while? We have to forgive one another. Right. We have to ask them kids to forgive us. And that needs to be taught in the home, amen. Because I'm telling you right now, if they've never seen no forgiveness in the home, amen, they ain't going to believe God's going to forgive right. Right. They ain't going to believe God forgave you. Amen. 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 The kids need to see that. They need to see Jesus in our lives, amen. Hey, listen, we need kids that, that are brought up, amen, and taught these different things at home, amen. But what are you teaching your children? We, I, I believe you're in a fundamental church this morning. Say amen. amen. I believe you've been taught the things of God. Amen. Yeah. We need to surround ourselves with godly people as much as possible. Right. I know you have to go around family, but you don't have to stay around them as long, no longer than you have to. Right. Sad thing about family is you get to, you don't get to choose your family. You get to choose your friends. Yeah, yeah but then in your family, you have a marriage, you have something other, you get together with them, sometimes you stay, sometimes you don't. You know what I mean? Amen. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> but what are you teaching your children, amen? I'm going to tell you something. Some children don't want to live in Canaan. And don't, let's, can we say this? Can I say this? Oh, okay. This is, a, this is a simple one. When we have fall festival on the 21st, don't ask your child do they want to go. Tell them get in the car. Amen. <laughs> when you come to church, don't ask them if they want to go. Tell them get in the car. Right, for sure. You say, well, when did your children start having to say so? When they had their own place. Amen. <laughs> they had their own house, had their own bills, and started paying them. That's when they had to say so. I mean, they had some liberty, but say so. Right. <laughs> Amen. Hey, did Joshua, in chapter 22, verses 8 and 9, we see that Reuben, Gad, Ham, Tribe, Manasseh, they went back after they helped the brethren. They did what they said they was going to do. They helped the brethren win their part. The nine and a half. But they listen, they 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 left when they uh, uh the nine and a half that were left uh, were in the land where the tabernacle was to be set up. Amen. The other two and a half tribes couldn't see the tabernacle from the other side of Jordan mm. when it got set up. So in Joshua 22, Reuben Gad the half tribe of Nassau, they built their own little altar when they crossed back over Jordan. Well, the nine and a half heard about it. They wanted to go to war with them. Boy, it tore them up. They serve other gods. Let me just give you this in Miles' uh, version right quick. It'd be the closest to the King James you can get. Here's what happened. They built their own altar on this side. On this side. The other ones heard about it. They had to meet. They had to meet when, oh, oh, man, you can't be doing that. They said, look, we're not serving no other Lord. And he said, oh, oh, and this altar we built, it ain't for sacrifice. That one out, y'all got over there saying, this is just one. Uh, they said that, that we can see that it'll be a witness. In other words, it was just for show. 
Can I tell you, you don't need to go to church just for show. You don't need to read your Bible just for show. You don't need to pray just for show. You don't need to do things of God just for show. Because that ain't real. And you can do it for show all you want to, but your kids don't know. Are you hearing me? They, there's so many people that, I, I've been preaching for a, a good while now. I've been preaching for almost 34 years. Been pastoring for almost 32 years. Now I'm going to tell you something. You listen to me. I pastored and I have had people come to church. They play church. They just play church. And they play church. One day, one day your kids are going to get to teenage years. And they're going to start doing some of that stuff you wish they hadn't done. Right. You're going to wish you had to play church. I'm just telling you. We got some here, just, just here this morning, that testify to that. that. I wish I'd have done this a little bit different. I wish I'd have done that a little bit different. I'm just telling you. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. You see, because yeah. everybody nowadays, they it seems like, uh, you, you remember that old uh, crazy song, uh, Working for the Weekend? <laughs> y'all act like y'all ain't never listened to that kind of music. You know, when you was backsliding like black still like your preacher was at one time. Yeah. I know you walk through uh, Walmart and Hotel California comes on, you sing every word of it. I do too. Still, I catch myself pushing the cart singing. And I'm like, Lord, what am I doing? You know. I like Tim Hawkins' version. I'm a greeter at Walmart in California. For my Vest is blue, and my hair is too. <laughs> Y'all need to smile. Listen to you something. Listen, 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 listen. I'm just telling you, kids pick up on stuff, and you know they do. You know what we're showing kids is most important? Having things. You know this altar they build? You know people do? They build them everywhere nowadays. Yeah. People's got altars everywhere. They got altars at work. Yeah, because that's where the that's where they meet with the Lord at. They got altars at home, but they don't come to church. They got altars at the beach. They got altars in the mountains. They got altars everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. That altar was to be set up in Shiloh. And, the, and, and Reuben, Gad, half tribe and that's where they should have went to worship. Yeah. Just saying. The Bible says, Amen. Amen. I, I, listen, I want you to notice. Listen. One of the things they said that this altar is not for sacrifice. Well, what is sacrifice? Why do you have to sacrifice in the Old Testament? Because of what? Sin. S-I-N. You know what they were saying? We ain't sin. Well, I know we ain't over where we're supposed to be. I know we ain't in church where we're supposed to be. I know we ain't read the Bible like we're supposed to. We ain't pray like we're supposed to, but it ain't sin. That's the way people believe nowadays. Right. It is sin. Yeah. For him to do, for him to know to do good and doeth it not, that covers a lot. Yeah. <coughs> to him, it is sin. Yeah. I'm just saying, listen here. They don't they don't feel like they've done anything wrong. They they feel like they're okay, amen. And listen, here's what they got upset about. They said, we built this over here so we could teach our children about this. Because we don't want later on to you, your children, tell our children they don't have a part. You know what he's saying in verse 27, chapter 22? Let me read it to you right quickly. Chapter 22 and verse 27. He said, but that it may be a witness between us and you, that our generation after us, that we might do the service of the Lord, before him with burnt offerings and with the sacrifices and with their peace offerings, where are they going to do them at? On that altar or the other altar? Because the dust got through saying, we ain't going to use this altar. Right. They're going to have to cross back over to do that. You know what they're saying there, basically? We the same as y'all are. That's a bunch of junk right there. You know the people out in the world today? These people that ain't at church right now. You go visit them or you call them and ask them when they ain't there. Well, I'm the same as you are. That's a bunch of baloney. Right. Listen, I'm telling you right now, people love the Lord are going to be in church. Amen. People love the Lord are going to read the Bible. Yep. People that love the Lord are going to pray. Uh, listen, people that love the Lord, they're going to witness and tell people about Jesus. You're right, that crowd is not like us. I'm telling you, they ain't. Amen. You hear me? Yep. But they don't want you 
say anything about what they don't do. Now, it's not good conversation just right. You know, I have people tell me this all the time. I got, I got one buddy. He, if I if I, if I do anything, if I just, if I, I'm, I can be walking like this right here, and if I act like I'm stepping over there, he'll say, you, can, you ain't supposed to do that. And he ain't close to the Lord. But I'm just telling you, people in the world, I'm telling you, they're going to they gonna watch you. That's uh-huh. what I'm saying. But it, here's the thing. They're going to point out. And, and, but, and, and we all need to be walking with the Lord. Don't get me wrong. We all don't want to step out of line with the Lord. But I'm simply saying uh, this morning is, listen, if I do step out of line, I want to step back in line. I'm not like that crowd out there. Amen. Amen. And, and by the way, I want to tell you something right now. Uh, this just crossed my mind. This is just still this. I've had a lot of lies told on me in 25 years. I've had church members tell lies on me. You hear what I'm saying? I've had church members whisper in somebody else's ear a big old lie. Now, if somebody talks to you about the preacher, would you please tell me? Because I want to know. Because we're going to confront them and find out. Now, if he said he slipped over and got him a cheeseburger when his wife wasn't with him or he slips over at a Chick-fil-A and got him a Chick-fil-A sandwich and somebody takes a picture of their preacher and sends it to their wife and gets him in trouble when he asks you not to. Let me tell you something right now. I, 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 I'll put up with somebody and love as long as I can. But I'm not going to put with nobody talking about me or nobody else in this church. They ain't nobody here perfect. Keep your mouth shut. Are you hearing me? And if, and if you're listening and you keep listening, the listeners is better is as bad as the whispers. Are you hearing the preacher? Amen. Don't be a listener to whisper. Amen. I preached on that about 20 years ago. Maybe I didn't preach on that one again. I'm going to tell you something, Ryan. we got people in our church that love God, carry a Bible, read the Bible, try to do right. Didn't say he was perfect. And we got another crowd that to come once in a while we got a crowd out there in the world that says they belong to Clearview. You know, you find out who your church members are, or so-called church members, when, when they have obituaries these days. My daddy got upset one time. He was reading the guy's obituary, and he ain't been in church in 30 years, and he put it in a member friend of the name of his church. My daddy was so mad he could breathe and burnt the paper up. I'm just telling you. I said, Daddy, they know he didn't go to church. That's not a bad testimony for Brenda Lane. That's a bad testimony for that man to put that in there, or his family. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I, I'm gonna tell you something right now. You know, um, if that worldly type that doesn't dress right, act right, do right, then you can't let your kids, you can't you can't drag your kids to the world and bring them to church and expect the preacher or God to straighten all that stuff up right. if you're gonna allow them to do that. Are you hearing me? I'm just simply saying, listen, it's, it's the, everybody can't be like the Lord unless we follow the Lord. Right. You can't live in, half one foot in the world. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. As a teenager, it was a time of my life when I tried to do that. That's uncomfortable. You ever try to straddle the fence? That's uncomfortable. Y'all get what I'm saying? Amen. It's uncomfortable. To a child of God! Right. <laughs> I remember I'd do some things I wasn't supposed to do. I, and the Holy Ghost would have me under conviction. Suppose I'd be looking back. I'd be looking around with Daddy in my own. I know he's watching somewhere or another. Somebody's going to tell him. Say amen, Miss Gail. I get home, he already knew about it. I'm going to tell you something right now, folks. You cannot live outside of Canaan. And other people live like Cain, in Canaan and be like them. You can't. That's why everybody, all of God's people, and I'm trying to get everybody on this side to go on this side. But you know, you want to, you want to, you want to drive your preacher crazy. All of y'all next Sunday sit over here, and all of y'all sit over here, and I'll be like this. <laughs> You, you want to get Miss Charity moved? How many of you want a lot of perfume? Raise your hand. About four of y'all sit around her. She'll sit over here. Uh-huh. Won't you? 
She's got a very sensitive nose. She's like Barney Fife's mother. Y'all watch that episode. Look here. And she'll get a headache in a minute. You know what? I'm going to sum this up right quick. But sometimes we want the birthright and not the blessing. Yeah. It, it's like that. Well, I won't, I won't give this much. I'm going to preach this before long. But there's another scripture that's like that. People just want the name only. Name only. Sometimes they want the benefits, but they don't want the burden. I'm going to tell you something right now. That's the problem with this younger generation coming along. They don't have too much to hand it to them. Yeah. They don't want to work for what they got or get. I'm going to tell you something right now. I tell you time and time again, every time you go to Dollar General, don't buy your kid a toy. Don't buy them a piece of candy. Don't buy them nothing sometimes. They don't look at you like dumbfounded. Oh, you don't love me. They need to be taught they can't be handed everything they want. Amen. Listen, these young men, I mean young, healthy looking men standing on street corners now with a cardboard sign wanting some money and I don't know what's going on in this world. Some people want the birthright, not the blessing, the benefits and not the burden. Some people want better, but they don't want best. Amen. You ought to strive for best. I'm telling you. Right. You ought to strive. Which side are you on? We need to be in Canaan. We need to be in God's will, in the land of blessing. Amen. In the promised land where God wants us to be, in the will of God. Let's everyone stand.